Hi everyone, it's Professor Primson, and today we'll talk about trigonometric functions of angles. So we've seen previously how to define the trigonometric ratios for acute angles. In this section, we're going to extend the trigonometric ratios to all the angles by defining trigonometric functions of angles. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to find function values for the six trigonometric functions of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or their equivalent in radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. And we're also going to find and use reference angles to evaluate trigonometric functions. So let's start by talking about trigonometric functions of angles. Let P O Q be a right triangle with an acute angle theta and place the angle in standard position as shown in the following figure. So you have this triangle that has triangle P O Q and you have this angle theta that's formed from the angle O. And so the opposite side is labeled, the adjacent side to theta is labeled and the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So if you place this triangle in standard position, notice that OQ, that line segment, is the adjacent side for the triangle that's gonna be placed on the x-axis. So the distance between O and Q will be labeled as distance X. The side PQ, which was the opposite side from the angle theta, that will be labeled as distance Y. And the side that's opposite the right angle is still the hypotenuse, and we'll call that distance R. So notice that you actually have a point that's determined from the distance from X on the X-axis and Y on the vertical axis. So you have a distance OQ, which is labeled as X, and you have a distance between Q and P, which is labeled as Y. That's going to be a point that's going to be this top corner of the triangle, which is P, X comma Y. And so this angle theta is now in standard position. The line segment OQ is the initial side or the adjacent side to angle theta. And then you have the terminal side, which is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Note that P, which is a point, P, X comma Y, is a point on the terminal side of the angle theta. In the triangle, the opposite side has length Y and the adjacent side has length X. After using Pythagorean theorem, we can extend the trigonometric ratios to any angle and define the trigonometric functions of angles. So notice, if you have an angle theta that actually forms between the initial side, which is on the x-axis, to your terminal side, which is the hypotenuse of your right triangle, you can drop a vertical side down from your point, P, X, Y, to the x-axis, and that distance will be called Y, and the distance on the horizontal axis is going to be called X, which is forming the adjacent side of your right triangle. Well, you can find out the hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem. If you take the length of x and square it, and you take the length of y and you square it, and you add those two squared quantities, x squared plus y squared, should be equal to the hypotenuse length squared. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared using Pythagorean theorem. And now we can define the trigonometric ratios as we did in previous video. So sine of theta will be opposite divided by hypotenuse. So opposite side of theta will be y, and the hypotenuse is length r. So it'll be y divided by r for sine of theta. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. The adjacent side for the triangle is formed as distance of x, and the hypotenuse is length r, so cosine of theta is x divided by r. Tangent of theta was equal to opposite divided by adjacent using right triangle trigonometry. The opposite side of the angle is y, and the adjacent side to the angle is x. So tangent of theta is y divided by x. Cosecant of theta is hypotenuse divided by opposite, or it's the reciprocal of the sine function. And so hypotenuse is r, and the opposite side of theta was y. So cosecant of theta is r divided by y. Secant of theta is hypotenuse divided by adjacent, or the reciprocal of the cosine function. And so hypotenuse is length r, and the adjacent side to angle theta is x. So secant of theta is r divided by x. And then cotangent of theta is adjacent divided by opposite, or it's the reciprocal of the tangent function. And so cotangent of theta would be x, which is the adjacent side, and y, which is the opposite side's length. So the definition of trigonometric functions, let theta be an angle that's in standard position. Let the point P, x comma y, be a point on the terminal side. If the distance from the origin to the point P, x comma y, is given as r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and so that's formed from the Pythagorean theorem, then the six trigonometric functions are defined as follows. Sine of theta is y divided by r, Cosine of theta is x divided by r. Tangent of theta was y divided by x, provided that x cannot be zero. Cosecant of theta is r divided by y, the reciprocal of the sine function, and y cannot be zero. Secant of theta is r divided by x, and x cannot be zero, and that's the reciprocal of the cosine function. And cotangent of theta is x divided by y, and again, y cannot be zero, and cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent function of theta. Since division by zero is undefined, there are certain trigonometric functions that are undefined for certain angles. The angles for which the trigonometric functions may be undefined are the angles for which the either the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate of the point of the terminal side formed by the angle is zero. And these angles are called quadrantal angles since the terminal sides are coincident with the coordinate axes, which will either give you an x-coordinate of zero or a y-coordinate of zero. So notice cosecant of theta will be undefined if the y-coordinate is zero, which would be on the x-axis. 
Secant of theta will be undefined if you're on the y-axis because x is equal to zero on the y-axis. Cotangent of theta is undefined whenever the y is zero, which is on the x-axis. And again, tangent of theta will be undefined whenever x is zero, which is on the y-axis. So you're looking at the quadrantal angles for whenever cosecant, secant, tangent, or cotangent may be undefined. So let's talk about evaluating trigonometric functions at any angle. We're going to turn our attention now to finding the values of the trigonometric functions are angles that are not acute angles. The signs of the trigonometric functions depend on the quadrant in which the angle theta lies in. So keep in mind, if you're in quadrant one, if the angle theta lies in quadrant one, all six trigonometric functions will be positive because the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are both positive and the six basic trigonometric functions are formed from ratios of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate and also the length of the hypotenuse, which was the square root of x squared plus y squared, or r. If your angle theta lies in quadrant two, notice that the terminal point will actually have an x-coordinate that's negative and the y-coordinate will be positive. Since the y-coordinate is positive, then the sine function will be positive and the cosecant function will be positive. All other four trigonometric functions are negative. In quadrant three, if the angle theta lies in quadrant three for your terminal point, then tangent of theta will be positive and cotangent of theta will be positive because the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are both negative. And so the ratio will be a positive number. And so tangent of theta and cotangent of theta are positive in quadrant three. The other four trigonometric functions are negative in quadrant three. And then in quadrant four, in the bottom right corner of the x and y axis, your x-coordinate is positive, but your y-coordinate is negative. That means cosine of theta will be positive, and secant of theta will also be positive because that is talking about the x-coordinate divided by the hypotenuse length for cosine. And secant is the reciprocal. And the other four trigonometric functions are negative in quadrant four because the y-coordinate is negative. And so just to summarize, the sine function and the cosecant function are positive in quadrants one and two, and they're negative in quadrants three and four. Cosine and secant are positive in quadrants one and four, and they're negative in quadrants two and three and tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrants one and three, and they're negative in quadrants two and four. So this is going to help us find out what are the values of the six trigonometric functions if the angle lies in quadrants one, two, three, or four. So example one, finding trigonometric functions of angles. Find the exact value for the following trigonometric expressions. So number one, the angle theta is seven pi divided by six. So let's draw out what is the right triangle and what quadrant does the angle theta lie in? So seven pi over six, that's more than pi radians because pi radians would be six pi over six. So it looks like we're at an angle of seven pi over six and theta will be in quadrant three. So we're gonna have a right triangle that's gonna be formed in quadrant three. And so the angle that's formed that will be in quadrant three will be pi divided by six. And remember, a pi divided by six is also a 30 degree angle. So we're talking about a 30, 60, 90 special triangle. So the opposite side of pi over six will be one half. The adjacent side to the angle pi over six will be square root three divided by two, and the hypotenuse is length one. But notice that we're in quadrant three, so the x-coordinate will be negative, and the y-coordinate will also be negative. So now we can find out what are the six basic trigonometric functions for theta equals seven pi over six. So sine is seven pi over six. Sine function was defined as y divided by r. So the y-coordinate is negative half, because we're in quadrant three, and it's divided by the hypotenuse, which is one. So you'll have negative one-half divided by one, which is equal to negative one-half. Cosine is seven pi over six. Cosine was defined as x divided by r. We'll notice that the x-coordinate is negative, because we're in quadrant three, and so it'll be negative square root three divided by two, and then it'll divide by the hypotenuse, has, which is length one, so it'll be negative square root three divided by two for cosine of seven pi over six. Tangent of seven pi over six will equal the ratio of the y divided by x, well, the y is negative one half, and the x is negative square root three divided by two. So tangent of seven pi over six will be the ratio y divided by x, which will be negative one half divided by negative square root three divided by two. And if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you'll have negative one half times negative two divided by square root three. Notice that the twos will cancel out because you're multiplying and also dividing by two. And so you'll have one divided by square root of three. And if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have square root three divided by three for the tangent of seven pi over six. Cosecant of seven pi over six is the reciprocal of the sine function, or in other words, it's r divided by y. Well, the length of the hypotenuse is one and the y coordinate is negative one half. So it'll be one divided by negative half. And if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you'll get negative two. So cosecant of seven pi over six is equal to negative two. Secant of seven pi over six is r divided by x, or the reciprocal of the cosine function of seven pi over six. So you'll have one divided by, the x coordinate is negative square root three over two because we're in quadrant three. So if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you'll have negative two divided by square root three. And then if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have negative two square root three divided by three, or secant of seven pi over six. And then cotangent of seven pi over six, 
it's the ratio of x divided by y. So the x coordinate is negative square root 3 divided by 2, and the y coordinate was negative 1 half, and so negative square root 3 divided by 2 times negative 2 over 1 after you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. You have the 2 divided by 2 will cancel out again because you're multiplying and dividing by 2. And so you'll have negative square root 3 times negative 1, which will be positive square root 3. So cotangent of 7 pi over 6 is equal to positive square root of 3. Let's try another one. Number 2, let's say theta is equal to 390 degrees. Well, 390 degrees is more than one revolution counterclockwise. So if you go more than one revolution, you'll be 30 degrees more than 360 degrees. So we're talking about a 30, 60, 90 triangle again. We have a 30 degree angle for our right triangle and the angle theta lies in quadrant one. So we have a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. And so the lengths of the sides are square root three divided by two is the adjacent side to 30 degrees. The opposite side is one half and the hypotenuse has length one. So let's find out what are the six basic trigonometric function values whenever theta is equal to 390 degrees. So sine of 390 degrees was defined as y divided by r. And so the y coordinate is positive one half because we're in quadrant one, the y coordinate is positive. And so the sine of 390 degrees will be one half divided by the hypotenuse one. So it's equal to one half. Cosine of 390 degrees is defined as x divided by r. So the x coordinate is positive square root three divided by two divided by the hypotenuse, which is length one. So cosine of 390 degrees is square root 3 divided by 2. Tangent of 390 degrees is the ratio of y divided by x. So the y coordinate is 1 half divided by square root 3 divided by 2 for the x coordinate. And so 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2, if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you'll have 1 half times 2 divided by square root 3. So again, the 2's will cancel out because you have multiply and divide by 2. And so you have 1 divided by square root 3. And if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have square root 3 divided by 3. That's tangent of 390 degrees. Cosecant of 390 degrees is the reciprocal of the sine function, or it's x divided by r, or it's r divided by y. So the y coordinate is 1 half, so it's 1 divided by 1 half, or multiplied by the reciprocal of 1 half gives you 2. So cosecant of 390 degrees is equal to 2. Secant of 390 degrees is r divided by x. And so it's r, which is length 1, because that's the hypotenuse length, divided by square root 3 divided by 2, which is the x coordinate. So if you multiply by the reciprocal, you'll have 2 divided by square root 3. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by square root 3 divided by square root 3, you'll have 2 square root 3 divided by 3. That's the value of secant of 390 degrees. And then cotangent of 390 degrees is the reciprocal of the tangent function of 390 degrees, which will be x divided by r. So x is square root 3 divided by 2 divided by 1 half, which will give you square root of 3. So from the previous example, we see that the trigonometric functions for angles that are not acute have the same value except possibly the sine as the corresponding trigonometric functions of an acute angle. The acute angle is what's called the reference angle. So the definition of a reference angle, let theta be an angle that's in standard position. The reference angle, theta bar, associated with theta is the acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So from the previous example, we were actually talking about what was the angle that was formed as the acute angle theta in our triangle that was formed in quadrants three or one. So the following figure shows that if you wanna find the reference angle theta bar, it's helpful to know what quadrant in which the terminal side of the angle theta lies in. So let's say you're in quadrant one. The angle theta will be formed from the right triangle, and so theta bar is also gonna be equal to theta. So if theta lies in quadrant one, theta is theta bar, and so the reference angle is equal to theta. If theta lies in quadrant two, notice you're gonna form a right triangle that's in quadrant two, and so this angle is what's called the reference angle, theta bar. So theta bar is equal to pi subtract theta. If theta lies in quadrant three, notice that you're gonna form a triangle that's in quadrant three, this angle, theta bar, is called the reference angle. And so theta bar will be theta subtract pi. And if theta lies in quadrant four, notice that you're gonna form a right triangle that's in quadrant four, this angle, theta bar, is the reference number, and so theta bar is equal to two pi subtract theta. So in example two, we're gonna find reference angles. Find the reference angle for the following obtuse angles. So number one, theta is five pi divided by three. So we wanna find out what is the quadrant in which theta lies in. So five pi over three will actually be in quadrant four because we're pi over three from two pi radians or one revolution. And so five pi over three will lie in quadrant four and notice that we have a pi over three left over to get actually back to one revolution or two pi, which is six pi over three. So theta bar, the reference angle, is two pi subtract five pi over three, or six pi over three if you change two pi to be in terms of divided by three with common denominators. And so six pi over three subtract five pi over three will give you pi over three. So that's the reference angle for this angle theta, five pi over three. Theta bar will be pi over three. And then number two, theta is equal to 870 degrees. So since theta is more than 360 degrees, it's more than one revolution. 
So if you take 870 degrees and subtract two revolutions, or two times 360 degrees, you'll find out that 870 degrees subtract 720 degrees to get 150 degrees. So 150 degrees and 870 degrees are coterminal angles. So now to find out what quadrant does this angle 870 degrees lie in, we are two revolutions, but also 150 degrees. So you have two revolutions, and then we're 150 degrees, that's actually in quadrant two. So theta will lie in quadrant two, and we're going to find out what is the angle that's left over if we want to get to 180 degrees. So we find out what is the reference number that actually will give us this angle that's in the triangle. So theta bar is 180 degrees, because that would be a half turn. So 180 degrees subtract 150 degrees, which is what we've already rotated. 180 degrees subtract 150 degrees will give us 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is this angle of the right triangle that will be formed in quadrant two. So theta bar is equal to 30 degrees. That's the reference angle if the angle theta is 870 degrees. So now if we want to evaluate trigonometric functions for any angle, we're going to follow these following steps. To find the values of the trigonometric functions for any angle theta, we're going to carry out the following steps. Step one, find the reference angle theta bar associated with the angle theta. Step two, determine the sine of the trigonometric function of theta by noting the quadrant in which theta lies. And then step three, the value of the trigonometric function of theta is the same except possibly for the sine, whether it's positive or negative, as the value of the trigonometric function for theta bar, the reference angle. So example three, using the reference angle to evaluate functions. Number one, sine of 315 degrees. So let's find out. If theta is 315 degrees, what is the reference angle? So since theta lies in quadrant four, we're going to find out what is the reference angle. Theta bar will be 360 degrees, subtract 315 degrees, and you get 45 degrees. So the angle of the triangle that will be informed in quadrant four will be a 45 degree angle. So sine of 315 degrees will be equal to sine of negative 45 degrees, or we know that sine of 45 degrees is equal to square root two divided by two. However, since we're in quadrant four, we know that the y will actually be a negative value. So sine of 315 degrees will be equal to negative square root two divided by two. So let's try number two, tangent of 240 degrees. So again, if theta is equal to 240 degrees, we're gonna find out what is the quadrant in which theta lies. We know that theta will actually lie in quadrant three because it's more than 180 degrees, but less than 270 degrees, which will be three quarters of a turn or three quarters of a revolution. So theta bar will be 240 degrees subtract 180 degrees or the equivalent in terms of ratings would be subtracting pi. So 240 degrees subtract 180 degrees. The triangle formed in quadrant three will have an angle of 60 degrees. So tangent of 240 degrees is equal to tangent of 60 degrees. And so tangent of 60 degrees we know is the ratio of the y divided by the x. Well, the y is square root three divided by two if you're talking about a 60 degree angle, and the x will be one half if you're talking about an angle of 60 degrees for the adjacent side. And so square root three divided by two times two divided by one after you multiply the reciprocal of the denominator, you have square root three divided by two times two, and that'll cancel out the twos because you're multiplying and dividing by two, and so you just get square root three. So tangent of 60 degrees is equivalent to tangent of 240 degrees, so tangent of 240 degrees is square root three. And keep in mind, the tangent function is positive in quadrant three, so that's why the answer is positive square root three. So let's try a few more. This time, the angle is gonna be in radians. So number three, find cosine of 16 pi divided by three. So again, we're gonna find out what is the quadrant in which theta lies. So notice that theta is 16 pi over three. This is more than one revolution counterclockwise. It actually will lie in quadrant three. So theta is in quadrant three means that the reference angle, theta bar will be 16 pi divided by three, subtract, 3 pi, because we're actually going to subtract 2 pi and also subtract pi, because we're in quadrant 3. So 16 pi divided by 3, subtract 3 pi, which will be 16 pi divided by 3, subtract 15 pi divided by 3. We're talking about an angle of pi over 3 in quadrant 3 for the right triangle. And so cosine of 16 pi over 3 is equal to cosine of negative 2 pi over 3 if you actually went 2 pi over 3 radians clockwise. So cosine of pi over 3, our reference angle, is equal to the x coordinate divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine of pi over three will be one half divided by one or one half. Since we're in quadrant three, we know that cosine function is negative. So cosine of 16 pi over three will be equal to negative one half. Number four, let's find out the value of secant of negative pi divided by four. So if theta is negative pi over four, we're in quadrant four because we have a clockwise rotation of pi over four radians. So theta bar will be equal to pi over four radians. And so we're in quadrant four, so secant of negative pi over four will be equal to secant of pi over four. So secant of pi divided by four radians is equal to r divided by x. The length of the hypotenuse is one and x is square root two divided by two. And so if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you have two divided by square root two. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root two divided by square root two, you have two square root two divided by two and the twos will cancel out. And so you get square root of two. So secant of pi over four is square root of two. 
So secant of negative pi over 4 will also be positive square root 2. Because we're in quadrant 4, secant is positive. So secant of negative pi over 4 is equal to positive square root 2. And then number five, cotangent of negative five pi divided by four. Angle theta is negative five pi over four. We're actually gonna be in quadrant two because it's a clockwise rotation more than negative pi radians. And so theta bar will be pi over four for the reference angle. So cotangent of negative five pi over four will be equal to cotangent of three pi divided by four radians. So since we're in quadrant two, the reference angle is pi over four. Let's find out cotangent of pi over four and then we'll determine the sign later. So cotangent of pi over four is the ratio of x divided by y. So x is square root 2 divided by 2. The y is also square root 2 divided by 2. So the ratio gives you 1. And since we're in quadrant 2, we know that the cotangent function is negative. So cotangent of negative 5 pi over 4 is equal to negative 1. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about how to find function values for the six trigonometric functions of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or also their equivalent in radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. And we also found and used reference angles to evaluate trigonometric functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about using trigonometric identities to evaluate trigonometric functions.